roles of model in educational planning. Models. First, let's look at models in educational planning. First, we have an iconic or physical model. This is a true representation of the actual uh, object. It's a true representation of the actual object, like example, picture. If you snap a picture of somebody, that is a true representation of the person. And in this case, the dimension of the model may be smaller or bigger than the real item, but it's a true representation of the real item. Iconic model can be constructed in three dimensions. Generally, an iconic model represents a static event, characteristics that are not considered in the analysis for which the model is constructed are not uh, included. Now, let us look at the analog model. The analog model is uh, the method, it's an experimental method, a laboratory experimental method, through which you use uncomplicated physical models. The model you use is not complicated to represent simple with a simple scale of time and length. And in this case, in this scenario, when you use such models, you are able to construct it in the things you have around you. You are able to do an experiment with the things you have around you. There are numerous limitations affecting the direct study when you are using this kind of model. First, the, the line time scale and so on. So when you are talking about the analog model, you are using tools that are not really complicated to get some things done. For example, if you want to look at the whole world and you are using the analog model. The analog model may not be able to give you a true representation of what it is. The next one is the mathematical model. This model is a component of what is represented and their relationship are given by a set of mathematical symbols. What the thought is transferred into a symbol. So a symbolic or mathematical model consists of a set of equations which defines and specifies the relationship and interaction among various elements of the section. Now, problems under study. The solution of the problem is that is then obtained by applying well-developed mathematical models, which have special advantage compared to other models. So using a mathematical model can give you a transformation of a model from a verbal to a mathematical form, makes greater clarification of an existing and likely relationship and interaction. Now, the next one is the simulation or the heroic model. It is simulation give you uh, a bit of the actual thing, how it will appear. The development of computer has led to the development of simulation and heroic model. Simulation model is more flexible than mathematical model. Mathematical model sometimes is a little bit um, technical understanding and passing it on, but with the simulation, you are able to have a feel of what a thing should be. Now let's take an example of a teacher who wants to teach blood circulation in the body. If you use simulation, a student will easily get to understand what you're talking about because you will see how the blood is pumping. The simulation will show how the blood is going through the veins and the rest of them. Now let us look at the scope of educational planning. What are the scope of the educational planning? Educational planning has a wider scope and for application in diversified units, section, department or field. Educational planning is merely consigned with the techniques of applying scientific knowledge. It provides an understanding which gives the school or institutional administrator new insight and capacities. Now, let us look at the various fields of application of educational planning. Which are the various fields through which you are going to apply? First, we have to look at the area of finance and investment distinction. You need to plan your finance. You need to plan your investment. In the educational sector, you need to talk about the cash flow analysis. You need to look at the long-range capital budgeting, the risk analysis, the investment distinction, dividend policies, and credit policies. All these are required under finance. Then you look at the purchasing and material management. In the material management, for in the educational sector, you at a point you need to buy some things 
at a point you need to manage the materials for teaching and learning and in this area you have to determine the quantity and the timing of purchase which is very vital replacement of uh, the replacement policies, logistics, and physical, you know, all these are very important. We are talking about logistics and the physical distribution of those equipment, of those materials or equipment that has been purchased. For example, if a state has to buy some computers and send to the state schools, definitely purchase would have come in, distribution would have come in, timeline would have come in, and so on. And the logistics of how you're going to move them around the state will equally be there. Now, let us look at the establishment of institution. This is germane too when you are doing your planning because scheduling and sequencing of allocation whereby you have to do your school mapping and the rest of them, location and layout of physical facilities, maintenance policy, projects, scheduling and resources, then optimal product miss is vital. Marketing. Student selection is a bit of marketing. Means of the means or single sets and strategy, manpower, planning, advertising, effectiveness of marketing. All this area has to do with marketing. Sometimes we look at it, oh, what is it? What are you marketing? Because you need to bring out the school. You need to tell people out there that this school is here and people need to come and apply their personnel. You need to plan for your staff. Recruitment, optimal means of age, employer, the wage and incentive. All these are areas you need to plan for. The research and development, determine areas to be focused on for research. Design, optimizing, reliability and evaluation of alternative design. Then you need to plan for the sick bay. There must be a place that will serve as a first aid if there is an emergency for any teacher or techniques of educational planning. There are different techniques used for educational planning. Now one of the techniques is the linear programming. Linear programming is basically a resource allocation technique. An allocation problem arises when there are a number of activities to perform but with limited resources then in this case you need to look for a way in which the resources can be allocated it is a versatile technique which can be applied to a variety of problem of management this technique is applicable in problem characterized by the presence of number of decision variable so there will be several decisions you need to take when you are applying this technique the most important feature of linear programming is the presence of linearity in the problem. The various models in linear programming are simplest method, transportation model, then assignment model. Another one is the dynamic programming. Dynamic programming model are used to make interrelation uh, sequential decision for multi-stage problem over a period of time. The underlying principle of dynamic programming model is that regardless of what the previous decisions are, it tries to determine the opti optimal decision for the period that still lie ahead. Then in this case, the dynamic programming approaches divides the problem into a number of sub problem or stages. Then what happens is that the decision made on each stage influences the one, the next stage, but also uh, every stage of, of the end of the problem. Then let's look at the next one, which is the game theory. This is a technique using logical deductions to explore the consequences of the various strategies which might be adopted by, comp by competing players. Thus, it can be used to represent the problem involved in formulating business strategies in a competitive situation. A game is specified by a set of players, a set of actions which are available to each player and the set of reward. In this case, determined by action which players chooses to exercise. This model determines the optimum strategy. Now you have the investment control method. Generally, the business firm must carry investors because production as sales do not match. The business firm should not hold some of the level inventories of the finished good and raw material and to ensure uninterrupted supply of goods and services to the customers. The inventory model deals with determination of economic order quantity, which balances the cost of procurement and inventory carrying costs. 
It determines how much to order, when to order, and how much to carry in stock so the total cost of inventory is minimized. Now, let's look at the, the next one, uh, which is uh, the decision theory. Decision theory, uh, in this area of decision, decisions are made under the condition of uncertainty, and these conditions are beyond the control of the decision maker. For instance, pricing decision of the competitor. Now, decision theory plays an important role in helping managers make better decisions under uncertainty future condition. Decision theory covers three categories of decision, making under uncertainty future condition. These three conditions are one, decision making under condition of certainty, decision making under condition of risk, decision making under condition of uncertainty. Now, let's look at the next one, replacement model. In the replacement model, replacement model is generally of two types. Replacement of items that deteriorate with time and those that do not deteriorate but suddenly fail. Example of first category is vehicle, machine, equipment. Now, we have other. The problem consists of finding an optimal time for replacement so that the sum of the cost of new equipment and cost of maintaining the efficiency of the old meeting a cost of loss of efficiency is minimized the second category include example like electric bulbs and transistor for boarding school the problem here is finding which item are to be replaced and which and whether or not there will be group replacement also when they are to be replaced. Now, let's look at the final one, which is the simulation model. Complex resources, resource allocation problem involving probabilities elements, such as holding of event, uh, inventories and other often cannot be solved completely by excess analysis. It is possible to simulate the operation of a system to create exact model of the physical system. So simulation is represented, is a representation of a reality through the use of model or some other device which we reset in the same manner as reality under a given set of conditions. It is the quantitative procedure that describes a system by developing a model of that system and then conducting a series of organized trial and error experiment to predict the behavior of the uh, of the to pre in this case you have to predict the behavior of the system over time simulation is a very powerful tool and is most widely used in operation and research technique